to join me in the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. And good afternoon, all. I will call this, this June something 20th County Council meeting to order. Um, five of my co-council members are present. Case is not um, present. Christine from the auditor's office is with us. First on the agenda is Mr. Barry Ritter of Ritter Strategic Services. He's going to speak to us about um, EMS. He's also handed out to everyone um, something for your reading leisure. Good evening. Good evening. Thank you for the opportunity to be here. Uh, I am Barry Ritter, <coughs> co-founder of Ritter Strategic Services. My company is a 9-1 public uh, safety consulting firm uh, that we established here in Indiana uh, about seven years ago. Uh, prior to uh, having this consulting company, I was a state 911 uh, director. I managed the 911 program for all 92 counties out of the treasurer's office, the state 911 board. Prior to that, I managed the PSAP, and uh, I'm a retired police officer out of the city of Richmond. So my entire adult life <coughs> has been involved in either local or state government. And, and public safety. And um, in the last seven years, we've had the, uh, the opportunity to walk, work in uh, between 25 to 30 counties in Indiana, and we were formed for the purpose of representing local government, uh, working on behalf of commissioners, councils, sheriffs, 911 directors, public safety boards, and navigating <coughs> today's world of public safety uh, and 911. I think the first time I actually did work here in uh, Fulton County on behalf of the commissioners, it was to settle like a $200 phone bill uh, uh, for Gail, and that's been a few years ago. And she was gracious enough uh, to reach out and, and ask uh, my company to come back to work on behalf of uh, commissioners and councils and the citizens uh, in this EMS project. Uh, the PowerPoint presentation that you have before you uh, is not a presentation that I will follow uh, verbatim tonight, but we have used that in the community engagement programs uh, that we have done. Uh, as you all are all probably aware, you currently have a contract with uh, Luther and EMS to provide ambulance service in the county, and that contract will expire uh, in 2025. It was a 10-year contract, and so um, Gail and the EMS board <coughs> uh, opted to do their due diligence. Uh, for us to come in and develop a strategic plan and identify the functional elements that would be needed in um, a request for proposal to determine how Fulton County would uh, provide for EMS service in the future. Uh, interestingly, uh, one segment of public safety that is not uh, dictated by state law that you shall provide is EMS. And so each uh, community, township, or county uh, addresses it differently or handles or provides for it uh, differently. And so it's up to the elected officials here to determine how best to provide for EMS service um, in the future. So in this strategic planning study, it was important to understand what the community wants. Um, and so our first meeting was with the uh, EMS uh, board and there were several community uh, representatives that attended that meeting back in January. Um, we have met with uh, the business community, um, and um, the first one was in Akron. Uh, we have met uh, and talked to school officials, elected officials at the county, uh, and the local level here in, in Rochester. Uh, we have met with the Fire Chiefs Association. Um, we hosted a community event um, just about three weeks ago at the fairgrounds uh, for community members to attend and several council uh, commissioners were there. Uh, we have scheduled two additional uh, community meetings uh, yet this month. One will be in Grass Creek, the other will be in Akron. Uh, those are being publicized uh, to provide citizens an opportunity to learn about those meeting dates and times uh, for my team to hear from those citizens. Um, 
and we've reached out to the school superintendents um, here in the county to have a discussion with them. And I'm here tonight to, to one, tell you about uh, what we've done this far, uh, but also to provide you the opportunity to either ask questions or uh, provide comments to me, or my email and phone number is in that PowerPoint to encourage you uh, as you go away tonight if you think about uh, EMS uh, or you talk to your constituents and you have questions, uh, you have the opportunity uh, to provide input back to us. Um, we originally were going to have uh, our work wrapped up in August, but we uh, just recently extended that agreement with commissioners another 60 days uh, to provide ample opportunity for everyone to have input. Um, why is this important to you? Because it costs money. Um, and um, being able to have the time to have discussions about um, how you're going to finance it, how you're going to pay for uh, some level of EMS service to be provided in the county. And uh, we all know that uh, most counties are not flush with cash uh, in the general fund, and uh, they're looking at other opportunities to be able to generate revenue, um, either through um, uh, public safety, local income tax, um, and most recently, you know, the General Assembly provided for additional uh, lift for EMS specific um, and being able to identify what that rate would be and allow your financial planner to um, identify uh, what level of revenue that might generate. Um, there are two facets that determine what level of EMS service can be provided. Um, the first is the data. And my team is looking at the data uh, to determine uh, to what level does EMS need to be provided across the county. Um, do you need one ambulance? Do you need two ambulances? Or do you need 10 ambulances based on the data? Uh, and the data is the run volume, uh, response times, uh, taking into account uh, transports out of the county to, to trauma centers or to, uh, other hospitals, um, staffing. Uh, but the other four um, is the financial piece. What's realistic? What can the county afford uh, to pay in a stipend to a provider uh, to guarantee one, two, five, or X number of, of ambulances in a community and the associated responsibilities that you might impose, uh, the expectations. Um, it's important to note that, um, uh, you know, in EMS, we're res we're responsive, you know, we could have one call or we could have five. Um, and as we look around the state of what communities are doing and how they rely on their neighbors uh, for additional resources, uh, we never want to lose sight of the importance of providing training and equipment to uh, the emergency medical responders, uh, the first responders at the volunteer fire department level, who it's critical uh, that they have the training and the equipment to be able to provide service as they wait on the ambulance to arrive. They're closest to the community uh, and they're quickest to respond uh, in the event that we're waiting on an ambulance uh, to respond from another part of the county or from another jurisdiction. And so as we look at what did we plan for here in Fulton County, that's a critical element that uh, we'll look at as well. Uh, community expectations. While we look at what the data says, we look at what uh, is financially feasible, um, we listen to and look at what does the community expect? Uh, what level of service? With the understanding of um, EMS service is not free uh, and it is expensive and their expectations equal dollars. Um, and what is available and, and uh, what are they willing to, um, to pay for uh, the county to have that level of service? You as elected officials, um, have to balance that um, and what's reasonable. Um, I would anticipate uh, that your um, existing provider, Lutheran, uh, we move to an RFP and um, publish specifications. They're going to respond to that, um, as will other providers as they look at your community um, to determine um, their level of interest in providing EMS service. Um, they could potentially um, respond. Um, so uh, we want to make sure that we have 
uh, all the I's dotted, all the T's crossed, all the spe specifications uh, that the community uh, expects uh, for a uh, vendor to respond to for then uh, us as a team to evaluate uh, to make an informed decision. Commissioner of the contract, you finance uh, because it's a, it's a team effort um, in the interest of public safety, uh, EMS. What I will tell you is that um, EMS is not plentiful. Um, you know, there's uh, few ambulances, few paramedics, few EMTs. Um, we see uh, where the state reported that we had fewer this year than we had last year, and there's a lot of variables for that. So there's a competition uh, in trying to um, find paramedics, find EMTs, <coughs> and there's a delay in um, receiving ambulances that may be bought. And I don't say that as in the vein of the county doing that and having a county EM service. Um, I'm saying that for the uh, private sector who may want to provide service here. Um, and so doing the due diligence now and being uh, prepared for what will come at the termination of the contract um, is where we're at. And we have plenty of time to do that. Um, we anticipate that uh, with the uh, reported recommendations coming out, um, that, that'll be due in October, uh, which will give us uh, plenty of time going into the first of the year for you to make uh, informed decisions as to what the next step would be uh, for EMS. With that, uh, I'll uh, pause and uh, answer any questions that you may have about where we're at or where we anticipate going. Um, Barry, you said at the beginning of your presentation that you had met with and presented uh, various organizations um, and have public meetings as it were. Have you noticed if there's been a good turnout of the public to attend these meetings other than <coughs> elected officials or someone that has teeth in the game? Yes. There have been? I, I've been impressed. Good. Uh, you know, the good the first know. community meeting we had at the fairgrounds, um, we ran out of chairs. Good. I, I ran out of handouts. And I, I told Gail at that meeting that I was impressed with the level of interest uh, from community members, residents, um, EMS service, hospital, um, elected officials, interested citizens. Um, you know, I think we had uh, on the front row a couple of gentlemen who came uh, just to be informed Good. because they had heard the meeting was going to be And uh, I'm hopeful that as we do these other community meetings, uh, we'll have the same. <coughs> Okay. I just was kind of wondering uh, as far as how many counties are managed privately versus by the, uh, by the government? That I cannot tell you. Uh, not as I stand here today. Um, what I, I can tell you that here in a few months I can tell you that information because we're doing a much larger uh, study for the state of Indiana as it relates to EMS, but I don't have that. But there, would you say there's quite a few that, that privately yes. are service there, there are There are more, um, in, in my guesstimate here, there are more EMS service locations provided by private than by what we traditionally know as uh, county EMS. Other questions or comments, board members, for Barry? Anyone in the audience? Questions, comments for Barry? <laughs> Thank you much. Thank you very much. I'll be back next week for a community meeting. I appreciate right. it. Thank you. Thank you much. Okay, next on the agenda, um, Megan Malad with the uh, Soil and Water Conservation District. I guess I'll talk first. Do you want yeah, to introduce, your, introduce oh, yourself to everybody? Yeah, I'm Mike Norman. I've been on the Soil and Water Board for 32 years. I'm the oldest, well, not the oldest member, but been around for a while. Uh, Megan, on the other hand, is the youngest. And she's an executive director. Uh, she's full of energy. She's full of enthusiasm. She's full of encouragement. 
and uh, we want to help her all we can. Um, she's got big ideas, but we need to, it seems, well, I said I've been around 32 years. Um, one thing we need to do better as a board and is, is communicate. I mean, I mean, I'm a farmer. I go home to farm. I don't bother you guys a lot. <laughs> and you guys send me tax bills, but anyway. <laughs> so, uh, but anyway, she, she, she wants to do a lot more with outreach, which, which I applaud. So, uh, anyway, uh, I think you'll enjoy her enthusiasm and everything. Thanks, Mike. Welcome, Megan. I don't expect you guys to read these. Right away, but this is just for your information to look at whenever you have time. So, like Phil said, I am Megan, um, executive director of Bolt County Soil and Water, and um, I don't want to take very much of your time, so I will tell you who Soil and Water is and what we do. So Fulton County Soil and Water Conservation District works within and throughout the county to provide clean water, healthy soils, and keep the soil in place, because that, that matters. And um, we do this by implementing conservation practices within the community. Cover crops, buffer strips. I'm sure you guys are aware of that. Okay. Um, how Soil and Water Conservation District benefits Fulton County. We bring money into the county. Um, we have a CREP program, which is Conservation, Conservation Reserve Enhancement Program. And since 2011, we have done, in the typical new watershed, over $2 million worth of um, conservation, getting conservation on the ground. Um, so that's that's one way. We also, um, I applied for a $73,000 grant last year through Clean Water Indiana, and that is to put $60,000 back into local residents here that are farmers for cover crops over the next three years. And I'm doing a $10,000 pollinator habitat to help the pollinators because those are important to us. And I have 3000 for education out of that grant. Um, so we bring money into the county through partnerships and organizations. We communicate and provide technical assistance. I get a lot of phone calls. I don't know if you guys have it on your property. Bush honeysuckle is an issue, especially with a lot of the local landowners. They're wanting to know how to get rid of it, how to cut it out, um, what to treat it, when to treat it. Um, we can answer those questions. I just had the county uh, commissioners reach out to me. Um, last week, there was a guy that said, I have an invasive species in the pond and at Bruce Lake, and we're trying to figure out how to um, kill it without killing the natives. So that's another issue that I've helped um, work with. So we, we do technical assistance, education, <coughs> conservation programs, and workshops getting ready to have. I don't know if you guys know, Ray Archuleta uh, will be um, coming next August. He's a, a soil guy, a famous soil guy. Um, our request, we don't, we're not asking for money or anything, we're just asking for your guys' blessing for us to be able to apply for another CWI grant September 8th. Um, and so that's, that's why we are here. Do you guys have any questions for me? What is the acronym you just rattled off? Grant. See, oh, Clean Water Indiana. So it's the same grant, the $73,000 grant that I've applied for. It's um, CWI's Clean Water Indiana. So Mike and I actually, in February, we went to the State House um, and spoke to Jack Jordan, um, Bob Cherry, and Stacy Donato, our, our representatives at a state level and we were able to secure an additional, so right now the, the budgeted line um, is $1 million for the Clean Water Indiana. We were able to up that to $5 million, an additional $5 million for a total of $6 million 
um, for this year. So we have $6 million to use up this year and $6 million to use up next year for it. So we were able to um, talk to our state representatives and be able to up that. And then it gets delegated to the soil board, um, the state soil board, to disperse through um, local um, soil and water districts um, to be able to, for us to apply for like um, grants, cover crops and stuff like that. Um, my request is going to be for staffing because um, we are understaffed where we're at. And we're not the only office that's understaffed. Um, there's, a, there's others around us that are as well, but that was one of the issues. There's um, 96 counties within within Indiana and 30, 36 of us are one person districts. That means we're doing the technical um, assistance, the communication, the education, the partnerships, and the administration by ourselves. So if we can get our district um, better staffed, we can do those five, five rules better. I can do them all because I am right now, but I can't do one well. So if we can get more people on board, more staffing underneath of us um, to do technical assistance or education or the administration part, then that will help us to see better as a district and be able to serve our community better. So you're seeking our blessing to apply for a portion of that grant? Yes. Of, of the six million or five million? Yes. Okay. Any other questions for me or members? For staffing, how, how long, how far out? Clean Water Indiana is three year grants. So they're only good for three years. What does this grant cover as far as your staff? Because last time we did a grant, then we found out we had to pay for benefits above a grant that was received. And so. Soil and water will be, be providing all of that. We, so with the six million, we also were allocated an additional 20,000 per year. So that 20,000 that we were allocated would go towards that. <coughs> Other questions, board members? Yeah, do you work out of the AFC office out here? Uh, or, or are you a county employee? Or I am a county employee, and my office is in front of New Hall. Okay, that's what I thought. That's what I thought. Okay. <clears throat> Anything else, board members? Any other questions? Comments? Any questions or comments for Mark, um, Megan, for May, one in the audience? If not, um, is there a motion to give a, a blessing for her to apply for this grant? I second it. Randy made the motion. Do you second it? All in favor signify by raising your right hand. Motion carries 6 0. You have a blessing. Thank you. Thank you much. We appreciate it. Okay, next on the agenda, department updates. Casey, you're front and center. Sure. Come on down. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Uh, so uh, the first thing I want to do is ask permission again for one of my squirrely ideas. So I have partnered with uh, the DLGF, which is the Department of Local Governmental Finance, uh, and Steve McKenney. And he is going to come down on Tuesday, August 1st, and do a free abatement class. So I'm asking permission to hold that class here. It would be from 9 a.m. to noon. Uh, it would give three hours of continuing education to anyone who needed it. It would be by invitation only. Uh, and we would have limited seating. I do have a list, and you all, you are all on it, as well as our commissioners, uh, city council, potential city employees uh, for next year, uh, various attorneys, things like that. Uh, I've also spoke with FEDCO. Uh, they will be invited as well. 
So I'm asking a blessing if we could offer that class here on that day, if possible. The day I'm sorry. August, the day it's Tuesday, August 1st. From 9 to noon. From 9 to noon. And it's uh, the ends and ends of the basement. It's going to be in here. It would be in this office. Okay. Yeah, this, this conference. Okay. So, so are we giving her a blessing? Who, who? Pete, Pete, yeah, Lee, Pete, blessed. Ron, blessed. All in favor, you're blessed. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> uh, the second half of that, I'm, I'm going to ask that I can close my office for that three-hour period. I, I did have somebody come forward. It was actually Jerry Good, and she offered to answer my phones if, if need be. Uh, I don't really want to put her through that, but uh, if. We have to close our offices. Basically, uh, all my girls need that training. The only other time that they can receive that training is if they go to a conference, it's gonna cost the county money. This is three hours that's gonna save mileage, stipends, potential hotel stay if they go to conference and a minimum $300 fee. So uh, I'm asking for that three hour window in advance. That way I can post a notice. The only ones that would really affect is the title companies. I will make sure they know in ample time so they have that three hour window to kind of know we're not gonna be there and make a wasted trip. So you will get plenty of notice that the office is gonna be closed yes. those three hours. Again, so question? Well, I think you are gotten I, I went to the commissioners, from the commissioners. Uh, they've given me a privilege for all that and they knew I was gonna come here as well. So she just wants us to reiterate. Yeah. Yeah. So are, are we all good with her closing her office? August 1st, 9 to noon, so the gals attend the surveillance class. Yes. Thank you. I appreciate that. And um, thank you for inviting us because um, I hope everybody can attend. This This would be very beneficial um, because we deal with abatements uh, as a council a lot. So I hope we can all attend. Yeah, I, I hope so as well. Uh, I just wanted to let you know uh, my ad valorem solutions field rep, Pam Martin, was issued a county badge for the safety of the public, as that sounds weird. I get a lot of phone calls with people questioning her very flimsy, unofficial paper badge that had her name and nothing else on it. So uh, in this day and age, I wanted her to have something that tied her more directly to us. She is listed as a field rep, as a service for our county. It does have my information uh, and the county's phone number on the back. So it is helping her some, but uh, the commissioners gave approval for that. Uh, my mobile office, I feel, although it was my first year, it doesn't sound great, but I feel it went well. I have four people in Akron, five in Grass Creek, 18 in Rochester. I did a total of 27 parcels, which equals uh, 16 uh, overall people I physically helped in that, and some of them were phone calls. Say the numbers again. Beyond that. Four uh, Akron. I did. Uh, let me rephrase this. I have four parcels of information I did in Akron, uh, five in Grass Creek, and 18 in Rochester. So 27 parcels total. 16 people attended across the board with those, and three phone calls uh, from my office when I was here in Rochester. Okay. So next year, I think I'm going to throw myself in on some Saturday mornings, and I'm going to hit the Niagara Lake. Conservancy Club, if they allow me there, I will do more of a request than anything. Uh, the Kiwana Library, if I do them on a Saturday, it gives me a little more leeway. If I do them after work during the week at a library, I'm limited to five o'clock. So it's not much of a after hours. Uh, so I, I will look at doing things a little different going forward, but I was happily surprised I had 27 parcels mm -hmm. <laughs> in those three days. Uh, but I'll try it one more year, and then I'll probably cut the cord on it if it doesn't do any better. But uh, And then the last thing I wanted to do is tell you there was a few Senate enrolled acts that will affect what overall will be taken in in the county. It won't take effect until January 1st of 2024, so it would be the 2024 assessment, 2025 uh, tax pay year. Uh, what they've done is the Senate Enroll Act, Enrollment Act uh, they're cleaning up the language of what a homestead is and they're going to take more buildings than just a house and attached garage and move them into a cap one which those buildings typically that are extra fall into a cap three 
So that means that only 1%, uh, no more than 1% can be taxed on a house, a detached garage, now an extra building, which can be a pole barn. And they've expanded the language of what a homestead site is, which is not the direct acreage in front of it. So that's going to be a big deal. Uh, the second part of that that's kind of important is any ex excess residential structure will no longer, after it is done in the homestead, anything that expands that won't be capped at a 3% anymore. The state of Indiana has moved it to a 2%. So that's going to cut down the amount of revenue that can be captured by the states. Uh, they further have decided, and I went, uh, the reason I'm bringing this up is because Friday, I drove to Indy and sat through a round table on the changes that are gonna affect our taxes going forward. Um, the second big thing is apartments, anything over five units. Uh, unfortunately, uh, it, it's ugly for me, but I have to be able to provide all three cost manners. Uh, the cost table, the, the sales comparison, and the income approaches, I have to be able to apply all three to that building, and I have to now by law give them the lowest of the three without them ever appealing. And it's the same for big box stores. And, and this is for 24, page 25? This is for 24, page 25. So that means Walmart will no longer be at their tax rate. I have to give them the lowest by law that I can allot. Uh, and that's the same for Doc Hoff's apartment complex that is across from the, the golf course. Uh, so it's nothing I can control. It's what the state's starting to mandate. And my new favorite, if you appeal, they felt that the language for the Indiana appeal process was bullying the public. And they felt that by saying that there is the option that if you appeal your taxes, it can go up because of items we missed. That language is now being removed. Uh, I can only either leave it as it is for their assessed value or they encourage us to drop it. So it, without going to Peter Bowen. The, the DLGI. The DLGI. And, and that is actually part of a House Enrollment Act 425. <coughs> so they, they are trying to uh, really stick the screws to us across the state of Indiana. <coughs> Uh, so, but so I wanted to let you know this is coming. Uh, they will clean up the language before the end of the year, uh, and at the end of the year, they'll release it. So, but this is where it's going. Boy, some lobbyists got paid big bucks, didn't they? I don't Just know what happened, sure but did. somebody left happy. It was not me. <laughs> they've been, <laughs> they've been yeah. fighting the big box store thing for a couple of years, because we've been that. talking about it yes. at treasurer's meetings for a couple of years now about big box stores. So. Yeah, it was a, a chef. I don't know, Schaefer, yeah. something big box, yeah. uh, the big federal case. And so some of this rolled out because of it, but uh, not not the homestead or, or how they're going to change the caps around. But uh, we are in camera. Our rep is working with us on that, and they're writing scripts now, and they'll go into place for 24, page 25. So we'll still have to kind of pay attention and make sure because Unfortunately, the state has also mandated it that if you have eight buildings and they're all considered residential use, I have to pick as your extra building the most expensive building on your property and make it the lowest rate. So there's that. <laughs> so there's all sorts of stuff happening. Oh yeah. my. Yeah, that's oh, so that's why I wanted to tell you now so it's not a huge surprise in a few months when they start actually releasing the public scripts. So this is Okay, but that's all I have. I'm sorry. Good news and bad news. <laughs> Good news, there's a free abatement class. Bad news, they're cutting our taxes, our tax base. And I appreciate you offering the mobile assessment to the taxpayers. That was nice of you to do, and I know it took a lot of time and preparation on your part to make, make that service available to people. I, I wish more would have taken advantage of it, but thank you for doing that. Oh, you're welcome, and it's new, so I'm, I'm hoping more for next year. So. Any, qu any questions or comments, board members, for Casey? Any questions or comments in the audience for Casey? Thank you much. Thank you. Gail. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. I only have a couple of things. Um, you guys got my reports last week. We so did. Thank you. You're welcome. The Senate bill 
158. Uh, we you have more bad news. <laughs> well, I'm not going to take out a county general and come out of the 91 fund, so okay. we're good. Okay. So, um, but the w one thing that we're going to utilize is we need to implement um, two other disciplines as a, <clears throat> sorry, my throat's kind of sore here, but the two disciplines that will be implemented will be fire and police. We only currently have EMD through Priority Dispatch and International Academies of EMD. It's, when this house bill came out, we need to implement the other two, and um, I've sent that to you a couple of times. So with that being said, instead of having a hodgepodge in our CAD system, currently Spillman incorporates this program as well. So um, they, it was double a couple of weeks ago, the price. Um, they had things in there that was not necessary, and it is half the price, and I know it's extravagant when you've seen the 76,000. Um, I will tell you the state pays for all training. So these programs are approved by the state of Indiana, and um, they do pay for this training. So that amount comes out of uh, that quote as well. So we will be uh, responsible minus the training portion of it. Um, so that was feasible for me, so we'll probably move on with your blessings, and I'll send the appropriation and sign the quote because the, uh, the commissioners, I believe they gave me their blessing yesterday. Can't recall. It was a big day yesterday, so. Um, and, and you have the funding for this? Yes, it'll come out the 9 one Okay. So, um, and I, we, you know, sent the quotes to you right now. Yes. Now we need to. We probably need to move on that, and um, we can implement that through the 911 board as well, or send that out and let them know what we're doing. And we do meet with Dr. Mann next week um, to go over some EMD protocols. Um, more and more of our cases are being called to court and are being requested from the public, so everybody knows. Yes, they are available, but they are not available if they're in a case. So I usually run those through um, the prosecutor's office before those are released. Uh, when I know those other case. So anyway, with that being said, uh, we just, uh, these Senate bills come out with some things that happen um, on a public safety level and um, classifying telecommunicators as professionals. Uh, there is a level of training that has to be met. So when, so when does that have to be met or when does that? By December 31st of this year. This year, okay. So some of our folks already have the 40 hour pre-basic, some do not, we'll get those in increments. We can do that online, it is kind of like um, scattered here and there when we do those online, but the 40 hour, we can get that through any kind of program. We don't have to necessarily go through priority dispatch, um, but um, our, QA or quality assurance and our program um, will come from this company here. Okay. They are rated, I will tell you, that the expense is because they're rated the best. That's good. So, so you need our blessing to move forward with this funding. Yes, and I'll, and I'll send that to all my board members as well after this blessing because we only get on order. Okay. So, so is there a motion? Is there one move to bless? I'll no second. Laurie seconded. All in favor, say five, raising right hand. And Pete abstains. Motion carries 5 0. Uh, the other thing is on the monetary side, the EMPG grant is almost um, completed. I'm on the last cycle, and that gives um, up to 18000 back to the county <coughs> with the job performance that we do out of the EMA. Really, but the maximum is 18000 uh, from IDHS. Okay, so that will be completed uh, by next week, and so they'll grant that probably in September, I do believe. Okay. And if you guys don't have anything else on the reports I gave, it's important those dates that I gave you um, on the email, please feel free to come to any of those meetings as we explain what EMA is. And for your community plan here for Fulton County minus community outreach, we have an overwhelming response from community outreach. They are using our resources, and Craig is being called out uh, more and more. So with that being said, they know what assets we have, and they're learning more about what 
the importance of EMA is. So on July 6th, I will tell you your Homeland Security will be here and they're gonna get their point of view on the cleanup and what it took uh, to clean up that mess in Southern Indiana or Central Indiana on those tornadoes. The expenses, what they see on the trials and tribute. So if you wanna come up with some questions or have anything for them or you can't be there, um, by all means send some questions and we'll have Dustin send them back. And, 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 and re, uh, the July 6th meeting, I know that Craig said, remind me of the time. It's at the detention center. Remind me of the it time. Is, it's from 10 to 1. Thank you. And lunch will be provided. So if uh, we can And I think he was an RSVP. Probably. Okay. I gave him that task. Okay. Because we're trying to uh, find a sponsor, and Farm Bureau has been very good about sponsoring a lot of our LAPC and so forth, but we're trying to get another sponsor. If not, we will um, call an executive meeting to use LEPC funds. Okay. We can do that. Okay. Okay. Any, any other questions? Any other questions or comments for Gail? Board. Questions or comments for Gail from the audience? Thank you much. You're welcome. Sheriff Eichmann. I want to fall down. All right. So I emailed out the uh, reports last evening. We got them, thank any you. Any questions on anything like that? It's pretty standard stuff on the questions report and the monthly report. Um, automatic vehicle locators, you guys blessed that a couple meetings ago. We've been rocking and rolling with that, getting that set up. I'm hoping, working with Josh and Spillman, I'm hoping the next couple of weeks we get that fully, fully implemented and ran out. Um, we had 58 inmates in custody or incarcerated yesterday afternoon. I didn't look today. Um, we did sign the uh, the contract with the Marshal Service um, to house federal inmates last week. Um, they contracted them out of $75 per day per inmate and then $35 an hour per transport officer per hour. So um, the, the $75 is, is $40 more than we're getting from counties, um, Holden County inmates. And then, the $35 an hour is, is figuring uh, transportation costs um, for if we had to be, if the, the jail staff had to be on overtime. You said 35, so you said two different things, $35 per transport and then an hour. Per, per officer but, per hour. That requires two officers. Wow. So it'd be wow. $70 an hour that they're going to pay that can reimburse the county for transport. Okay. Um, wow. Okay. We had to get some training completed for the jail staff. The jail staff has to be uh, armed and they haven't been thus far, so we had to get some firearms training and get some ballistic vest order, things like that, um, to get compliant with the, the USMS, but um, everything should be rock and roll on that. So we've contracted for 36 months up to 50 beds, um, and then we've got a 30 day opt out. If either one of us like what's going on, we can, we can opt out 30 days. So. Any questions on that? Do, do they have to be kept? That's two good questions. In a, in a separate part yeah. of the, okay, okay. Was that with you short staffed? No. We, I mean, the, the jail's adequately staffed now. Um, mm -hmm. it, I mean, it, I don't foresee a whole lot of transports talking to the marshal services. They don't have a whole lot of transports. They don't, they say they don't have a whole lot of transports coming out. Um, in the event that we would end up with 50, 50 federal inmates, I mean, yeah, I may have to come back to you and we'd have to talk. Um, but we're getting seventy-five dollars a day per inmate, so mm -hmm. um, you know it, it's worth it's it's worth keeping that in place. You know, if we got to come back to a couple transport officers or something else, but um, initially, I don't foresee that being an issue at all. So, another seller question. I'll, I'll be brief, Steve. So, would would these would this additional inmates have any bearing on the contract? that you have to feed these people we're gonna I, pay, I forget what that's called yeah i mean it's a food service contract okay we pay but per, per so meal so so we would pay an addition we would pay two dollar i think it's two dollars and 56 cents per meal okay so it would cost us an additional seven dollars a day okay per okay. day so okay um and then they would fall into our medical contract too anything inside the, the facility um, and, and that's going to fall under the blanket of our contract now than anything if they would have to be shipped out or anything, the, the marshal services, the federal government pays for all that, so. Oh, wow. Okay. 
talking to other sheriffs and, and other facilities around the state, this is a win-win for, for county governments. It's, it's a, you know, it's here, the beds are available, the staffing is there, and it's just a way to generate revenue to, to pay down these bonds. So um, I, I don't see that it's a, you know, we can lose on. So. I agree. It's all good to go now. It's all good to go, yeah. We're waiting on them to, to send it back with their signatures up their chain, so yeah. But, you know, it should be good to go. Yes, sir. This just moves underneath the ordinance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 70, 15, and 15. I think it's 80 and 10 or 80. I uh, thought 70, 15, and 15. And, and it may be, yeah, whatever, whatever the ordinance is. is. That falls so, underneath this ordinance. Yeah, we, that, that's what we talked about with the commissioners. They're just following the same ordinance as the money gets generated revenue in. It's, it would go into that under that uh, I think that was under specifically for other county inmates or yeah, that's green yeah. yeah yeah hmm. interesting any other questions on that all right um jcap I sent you guys out an email last week on jcap jail chemical addiction program um, this is basically a program that, that we've been working on behind the scenes since the first of the year when I came into office. Um, Kosciuszko County is who we really followed, kind of followed up with on this program last year. Um, it's been successful in several counties around the state. Each county kind of fine tunes it specifically for what their county's needs are as well as what they have for community resources. But I'm working behind the scenes. We're going we're gonna to fire it up in July. Um, I think July. 10th is the, uh, the start of it. Basically, we've designated a, a cell block or a pod in the, in the detention center that they make sure going to be housed in. Um, they're going to be working through a recovery program uh, as well as developing life skills and mentorships. Um, they're going to have the recovery aspect of it on top of learning bank financing or learning parenting classes or anger management or CPR. Um, it's completely scheduled out. They're going to be busy most hours of the day. Um, and it's a 12 week program, so we're looking at graduation. October-ish. I know that there was a couple different dates that came out, but it'll be in October. So I'll certainly keep you guys uh, posted of that. Um, funding thus far has been through um, has been through donations, and not even really donations, just volunteer work. I did get a grant for three thousand dollars for the program. Um, I've had several community members and businesses reach out saying, "What can we do to help? How can we donate?" So I really foresee this being a successful program and and not going to be any issues as far as funding. Been working with the auditor's office trying to get uh, uh, an account set up to where we can have it all tracked through. Money's coming in, money's going out for, for the JCAP program, but um, it's not going to cost taxpayers anything. It's going to be fully funded by, by volunteers and, and donations and grants. So uh, we had service provider training last week at the sheriff's office, basically just letting all the volunteers know what they can and can't do inside the facility which you can and can't bring in um, what to expect things like that so and uh we probably had 25 <coughs> or so we've probably got another 25 volunteers we've got to do but i mean it's it, it, i really foresee that being a good program so so do inmates have to meet any certain criteria to yeah. be allowed to be invited for this yeah, program, there's going to be an application process and it's going to be selected by i mean there's going to be a committee put together and to tell you exactly who that is right now i can't i mean jail commander is going to be involved in it i know probation is going to be involved in it um you know if the defense attorneys have people that they think uh, the big thing right now is their desire to want to want the program um, there, there's no incentives for them as far as a sentence modification or time off or anything else it's they've got to want the change so um so with that, I think, you know, people that know these inmates that deal with them on daily, uh, on the daily, I think know who's ready for that and who's not ready for that. So, and then obviously we want to keep them there the 12 weeks for the program. Um, I'm sure some things are going to happen where, you know, somebody may modify out or something like that, where they're not going to complete it, but we certainly don't want to start a program and, and have a, you know, people fall out as, as the program goes on, so. Sound like a great program to me. We're hoping. So. Sounds good. That's all I've got. Any other questions or comments, board members, for Travis? Audience, anything for Travis? Thank you much. Thank you. Okay. Kathy, anything other than nothing? Okay. John. <laughs> Mm 
kind of decided <coughs> which way you want to go? Yeah, I thought we had it, and I guess we had the paperwork done wrong. Is that right, Christy? Well, it depends on, it's like you took half of each option, so it depended on which way you wanted to go. So we need to sit down and get the paperwork done correctly. It would appear that way. So the money was wrong, the amounts were wrong, or what? I'm confused. It depended on the way he wanted to go about it. Okay. So in the meantime, no road repairs are going to be done until this is fixed? I have no idea. John decided to pull the appropriations last night. When, I mean, we could have done the appropriations that were presented last night and made up the difference in next month, which I'm sure you read in the email. But he pulled the appropriations last night from the commissioners, so they didn't have an opportunity to approve them last night, which is why you don't have them in front of you tonight. Seems pointless, but okay. Seems like we're having a big delay in getting stuff done over paperwork. It should have been, if there was a problem, I guess I don't understand why it wasn't corrected or called or notified to have it done. It was notified as soon as I got the email with the additional appropriations on there. So this is easily corrected? Yes. I mean, I would think so. Yes. John, easily corrected? That's what she's saying. Okay. We'll try again. Well, I don't know. Just in the meantime, you're burning nice weather to be doing road work that we can't because of a, a clerical issue. That just seems silly. <clears throat> like we should be better than that. We'll, we'll get this fixed. In, in, within the week, how's that? Well, that's good. Does that work? Because, yeah, I mean, John needs to get, he needs his money to, that he has, he needs his money moved so that he can get road repairs underway. Okay. It's just the season <laughs> for it. Understood. So, what, you don't have the money for oil? Is that what's going on? Right. You already got your stone. Okay. Mm -hmm. We need the oil and then also money for the community crossing to match. That could be a huge problem. A huge problem, and if we don't get it, then well, yeah, we lose the we lose the funding from the feds. We well, lose the projects, right? Okay, you guys signed the contract for it, so you guys yeah. So the county's on the hook for the federal money that we're counting on. Yeah, sounds like we need to get this corrected like yesterday. It'll get corrected. Well, I hope so. Yes. Anything else for John? Community crossings. That's like four fifty north, seven hundred north. Mm -hmm. Anything else for John? Thank you much. Thank you. Josh. Good evening. Good evening. And you and you handed out information to everyone. Yes. Everybody should have Yes. Okay. And everybody's handout should be in order with mine. So let's go ahead and start with page two. So last night I went to the commissioners and asked the commissioners if I could move forward with presenting to you an infrastructure, infrastructure upgrade that we knew was coming years back. Uh, and that upgrade is necessary due to the fact that the hardware that we currently have for storage and compute resources is going into life here in the next year. Uh, you'll see as we go on, I'll, I'll show you some information that substantiates that. We'll just go ahead and get to the brunt of the cost right off the bat. Uh, commissioners last night wanted me to talk with the group again this morning. We had a conference call. Um, I talked with them a little bit about the fact that uh, IT Savvy is our bar. Uh, they're locked in with Dell as far as pricing is concerned. Wanted to see them do a little bit better if they could, uh, especially bearing the fact that the price was already considerably lower than what it would have been had I gone direct through Dell and configured everything on my own through the website. Um, and I'll get to that as well. So the cost, the final cost for this project, and we can go into technical detail if you'd like, uh, this is basically all of our compute resources uh, for our virtual servers throughout the county and our storage. Um, it all goes into life 
uh, at the uh, date of February 2024. We cannot renew. That was February 2023. Uh, unfortunately, this is not like a regular system where we can sit there and just swap upgrades into it. It doesn't work that way. If we want to add additional storage to the arrays that we have now, uh, we can no longer do that because shelves are no longer available for the product since it is at that point of going end of life. Uh, my biggest concern is not whether or not the hardware itself is feasible. It's still very feasible and, and usable. It's the actual operating environment. And with cybersecurity issues looming like they have been over the last X amount of years and only growing more concerns as time goes on, uh, if the operating environment isn't supported any longer, uh, we have some type of mishap that happens, we're in harm's way. And we've got to keep that operating, operating environment itself up and running and current. They will no longer support that at the end of life. So do they know they have you? Yeah, they do know they have you, unfortunately. Uh, so the total cost for this project is $916,844.08. It's a turnkey solution that supports moving to a new system, unlike our traditional systems that we've used over the years, which is uh, a SAN infrastructure. Uh, this is a VX rail system. They have what they call compute nodes. There'll be five compute nodes at this location and five compute nodes over at the detention center. Uh, those work in conjunction with one another. Should we have any type of failure here? Um, it's very similar to what we've done in the past. It's just different types of hardware. Um, it will take over at the detention center, and they are both <coughs> identical systems. So throughout the day, every so many seconds, the transactional data is being moved across from one end to the other, so each end is current. What we may do, uh, looking at our data at rest, our backups, uh, with the old infrastructure, doing some investigating this morning, going into a little more, more detail with Dell, with the current systems, being the fact that our data at rest, especially, we can put into an encrypted environment uh, that would protect the data at resting, so that would give us the ability to take those units and put those in a situation where they act as backup storage. That would give us a little bit more backup storage. That from an active standpoint, it's not the route that we could take, unfortunately. Um, so we've got the brunt of that cost there. Last night when I presented to the commissioners, uh, we had a total of $933,258.35. So roughly, it's not a huge amount, especially considering the cost of the project. It's another $16,444 and some odd change. Which, price to price. which ends up being the total, and what did you say? The total is on the very first page on the back side, or excuse me, second page on the back side, $916,844.08. Thank you. And that's sixteen thousand four hundred and forty-four dollars and some odd change less than the original. Now, this is also including including the very first quote that you looked at. This is also including not only the hardware itself for both locations, it's including all the licensing that we need as well. Um, it's including the licensing for our current virtual server environment. We had to purchase additional licensing for that. That'll carry over with the current licensing <coughs> we have. So it will end all at the same time. We know that's a perpetual machine. It constantly comes up every X amount of years. We purchase X amount of years in advance to lock in the price. Uh, but that brings the current licensing that we have now with the new licensing needed for this system, and it ends at the same day. So that's the VMware uh, vSphere that you see for three years. That's additional. That coincides with what we currently have. That's added on top of what we currently have. And then we have VMware Horizon. And what that is, is years back, back in 2011, I believe, maybe it was 12. Um, I don't remember where it was, 11 or 12, we virtualized, I think it was 11. I think 2011, we virtualized our server environment. And it worked out fantastic yeah, for us. Yeah, it, it gave us uh, more flexibility. It gives us the ability when a vendor comes in and they says to, when they say to us, hey, we want these specs, we want to sell you the hardware, and usually that hardware, and I'm not knocking vendors, but when they come in and want to sell you one server at $35,000, and you're only going to use 5% of the resources in that server. This gives us the ability on the fly within about 15, 20 minute time frame to have a VM up and running for them to meet their specs. We haven't had one vendor that's came here yet that has asked for certain specs and we couldn't meet those needs. Um, the current system that we have now, there's 25 terabytes of storage at each location. 
This new system here will have 56.9 terabytes of usable storage. So we have twice the amount of storage that we have currently. This will give us room to expand. The current system that we have now gave us about seven years of use before it went into life. This system should give us much more than that when talking with Dell. I told them, you know, unfortunately I understand the scenario. We've been down this road twice. This is our third act, so to speak, with Dell EMC. We've been very pleased with the systems, very pleased with the support that we get from them. Most of the, the product itself is service, serviceable by Devin and myself, but there are certain items there that when they go bad, they do not allow you yourself to replace it. They have to have a tech on site to verify that it's working due to the cost of some of these parts. Um, but it's more storage, more compute resources, and the way this system works, unlike now where we have two servers here locally and a storage array, we have five servers. They all have storage in each of those servers. They're considered what they call nodes. Those nodes down the road, should we need to add to it for more storage or compute, it's literally just adding a new node. And depending on the time frame, it typically does not matter whatsoever what the time frame is. You can add that node in, it'll marry right in, so we should get 10 plus years out of this system. It'll probably be a system that, for myself, I probably won't be in front of you next time around to ask for something like this. And when I say ask, I'm asking for your blessing, I'm not asking for money for this project. This money has already been budgeted. So, if we turn then to the Dell Technologies page, a quote for your consideration. This would be if I would have gone on to the Premier page and done the configuration myself. Um, the total cost just for the server itself through Dell, the two servers, would be $956,572.70. And that roughly comes out to a difference with working with IT Savvy and Dell Direct through the reseller and through Dell, through their team, um, the savings came out to about $243,008.49. Or $243 so it was a substantial savings. Then of course you have the licensing on top of that. But if you look, you've got just on the first page that I sent to you, $713,000. $564 compared to that $956 that I just quoted off. So there was a substantial savings. We worked with them for months to get the price down, and we even kind of squeezed some more out of them this morning. So, um, for proof, as far as if should if any of you get asked about this and why we're spending this type of money on this, if you go to, you'll see after we get past that Premier page with the pricing for the $956,000, if you go to the next page, you'll see some highlighted dates there. That's the end of renewal, which shows the February 3rd of 2023 for our uh, 300 hybrid system that we have. And then we have the two identical systems at each location for the 450 call flash. And those are uh, end of renewal of February 2023 also. And then end of service life for those units are February 2024. So here we are now in June, getting ready to approach July, by the end of the year, and just shortly thereafter, we'll be done with those units as far as operability with the operating environment itself. And then you have one more notice on the back that's talking about the actual software itself, and you can see it's effective June 30th, 2023. So, the question is gonna be funding. Uh, years back, we knew, like I mentioned, that we were going to approach this mark and we'd have to move on it. I didn't want anybody to be caught with their uh, hands tied behind their backs. It's a lot of money. We knew it was going to be a lot of money. For the five-year bill bond, we have for the very last page that's highlighted, we have storage area and network for $450,760. We have the DX rail virtual hyperconverged infrastructure for $350,000. And then we have the VMware licensing at $85,000. Uh, $85, then in 2023, if you look at the uh, storage, you can see the 100,000 over in Coon Cap. Now, I've spent a little over 30,000 of that, so there's about $69,000 current in, in that line item. But the total bond highlighted is $892,760, the Coon Cap. Like I said, I had 100,000 and I found that we'd spent about 31,000 of that. Uh, so 
workable right now, we're right around 960. And even at the 960, our total cost comes in underneath that. Now, the other thing I'll say with this, the other added benefit that we get with this new system is, along with the virtual servers, the VMware Horizon licensing comes with that, and that will allow us to virtualize our desktops as well. What that will do is that will allow us now to, instead of looking at a rotating schedule that we have between the five, sometimes less than that, let's say three, five, seven years with this desktop units that we have throughout the county, depending on what department, even some of our higher end users, this new system will support that with the resolutions that they need, and that gives us the ability to take away those compute resources from the physical hardware on their desks themselves and put it on this VX rail system itself. So that gives us longevity with the physical piece of hardware as well. So if we get to a point where we start to see that the actual piece of hardware sitting on the desk is aging, the resources are getting gobbled up, there's not enough memory, there's not enough compute power to it, we can sit there and adjust that on the fly on the VX rail system and basically they're relying on the network to sit there and get their compute resources directly off the server. So it basically takes our desktops into the same realm as what we did years back with our server equipment. So I am looking for your blessing to move forward with this purchase with the bond money. I do want to verify with Christina that the bond money is there and it's usable. Um, but if your permission allows for it, I'd like to move forward. Did you just trade out about the the mid? The, 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 the very first page there. If you look at the very first page, you can see a letter from uh, Dell Direct from their uh, Midwest sales manager. You mentioned checks having to be involved. Will they have to be involved with the installation where we'll have a bill on that later too? Or no? no, this is a turnkey solution. Everything is built into this. So three things. One, with this VX rail system, Dell, when we talked with Dell, we were expecting to set this up ourselves on our end, being the type of system that it is. They want to send it out with their tax. They will install it on site. After that, they hand us the keys like a car, and they say it's all yours. Okay. That's fine. We do not have an option on that one as far as setting up on our own. The other thing is this, car this carries five years. Uh, excuse me, it's four. Five, five years. <laughs> missing a thumb there. Five years of 24-7 of on-site support should we have any technical issues. And then from a uh, uh, pro support standpoint, uh, over the phone as well for any troubleshooting, it's five years as well. So this is all encapsulated into the, the purchase. So there's no gotchas after we get the unit five years from now, that's the only time that I'll be looking at renewing support services for that. So hardware's covered, any type of software bugs are covered, we're, we're good in that scenario. We have the network infrastructure, one of the things is an update. One of the things that we've been doing is we've been upgrading um, our network switches. Our network switches have been one way that we have been waiting on from uh, HP Aruba. That finally arrived about two, almost three months ago now. It was about an, almost a two year process of getting them in. They came in, we worked on the detention center, the jail, excuse me, the 911 detention center, uh, probation, we have uh, in highway, we have the annex here, and then we have the courthouse to finish up with. Uh, then we have those all swapped out. Our network infrastructure will support this environment, and it, it will support, that's another purchase that we did years back. Uh, we're looking at uh, access port speeds of five gigs on every single port that we have. My lifetime, I won't see any need to upgrade. So you should not see us come forward with a major purchase like that again. Um, also with those units, we carry a support contract with those. Should one go down, we get a next one the very next day. So we're covered. Kudos. Yes. Thank, thank you for your hard work on this. Um, any questions or comments? Board members? I Randy? have a question, Josh. Sure. Uh, I remember several years ago, and I'm not definitely not very well versed on mm -hmm. computer savvy, but we ran into a situation with our heating system where we had proprietary. Um, oh, yeah. Yep. Is that still a case, or is that something that you not necessarily going to think yourself into? Now, that would depend on the vendor down the road. I know when we were looking at the detention center, um, that was one thing that they said they did not want to virtualize. They wanted a physical unit for that. 
there are special circumstances. So out of the 52, I believe, virtual servers that we have, there may be one or two I'm missing. Um, when we started out here at the county, I think we had a total of maybe 12 servers. We're now at 52. Um, with the HVAC system, I know exactly where it was a Windows 98 machine. Mm -hmm. It was a decrepit bad shape. Um, they cannot uh, they cannot virtualize that. We have one other server from a vendor that we cannot two excuse me. We have the recording server uh, for the interview rooms over at the detention center, and then a 911. We have our recording server uh, that records the 911 calls. They cannot be virtualized. We can utilize virtualized storage for those, but as far as the actual resources, we cannot compute resources. We cannot. Uh, due to the fact that there's special wiring and adding cards that need to need to happen and, and it just it just can't take place. So, any other questions or comments, board members? If not, um, is there a motion to give Josh a blessing to move forward with this, Lori? Yeah, I make a motion. Is there a second? Ron seconded. All in favor, signify by raising your right hand. Motion carries six zero. Thank you much. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Okay, I think that's <coughs> all apartment heads. Michael, do you want to speak before we <laughs> go forward on our agenda? Not unless you want me to. Ah. Okay. <laughs> and and so I'm passing so Michael, so I remembered. If you will take one and pass it down, this is from Michael Ladd. meeting at, starting at 10 as I said and um, I'm going to take the this is going to be a milestone because it's going to be um, a potential market potential analysis of what kind of housing the county could actually be looking at it's going to be rough data don't take it all to heart but I'm going to send you all um, a connection to this meeting so that if you're near a computer at 10 o'clock you can get on it and actually get some information firsthand and start thinking about it on um, the 14th of August and I don't have a time schedule for this it'll be in the evening I can tell you that much there'll be a meeting um, a housing symposium and what this is going to be it's going to be a public meeting to actually discuss the refined information that you receive tomorrow um, so you, you uh, get a more detailed picture of what type of housing uh, the county and the cities can take and deal with. Um, if you look, the first, what you've got right here in the first two pages is a breakdown of an earlier meeting that we had uh, to put together a communications program for getting the information out. We're gonna get it out through the newspapers, the radio station, any place that we can do it um, but this is just a rough outline of what it's going to be I just thought I'd share that with you if you look at the third page um, you see the housing initiative roadmap and where that little balloon is is where we're standing right now um, so we've still got a ways to go that's about another year out there uh, six eight months basically um, so uh, like I said, um, this link will come sometime between 9 and 10 because they're time sensitive and I'll forward it to you. Uh, so don't, if you get getting close to 10 o'clock and you're looking for it, you don't see it, don't get worried, it'll, it'll be there. At some, as soon as they send it to me, I'll send it out. So that's that. And then I'm just going to do two other things for you tonight. Um, the Blacker Business Park, we had a meeting on the 5th of June, and that will finally be completed at the end of this year. 
um, sometime around September we think it will be a new paved everything in it um, so that will be that will finally be done and then the other thing the last thing that I'll just report for you is uh, I've been working with Pike Lumber and Craig is concerned about uh, the condition of Route 14 and uh, so we He's asked for some help. I put him in touch with local, uh, with the state officials. He's working with NDOT to um, see if he can get them to do a little more of what's planned for this summer is a chip and seal program. What he'd like to see is take it all the way down to dirt and rebuild the road complete and total, which is the plan for about three years from now, I understand. Um, so he wants to speed that up for working with him, see what we can do. Brought in the uh, senator and, and representative. Um, there's a few other people that we're talking with at this point too. I don't know where, how far that will go, but that's going to be a major change if it happens. So um, that's kind of the stuff. The other stuff that you see on that page is stuff that we've been working with, meetings attended, things like that. You'll start getting that kind of information too. So in the future, so that's all I've got. Any questions or comments from Michael, board members? No. Thank you much. <clears throat> yeah. Okay. Next on our agenda, ordinance authorizing. Okay. Authorizing investment of public funds. I'm going to read this once and then have two readings by title only. Kathy, do you want to talk about this? Yeah, well, just to read. Before I read it? Yeah. Okay. Um, I apologize because this has expired and expired in May. I didn't catch the date. Um, otherwise, I have brought this to you last month. Basically, what this is, it allows me to invest county funds. Um, beyond two years, but not longer than five years. And it has to be updated every fifth year, so that's what this is pertaining to. So, so, so I agree, just the front page. Um, ordinance number 06202023, um, adoption Fulton County investment policy and ordinance authorizing the investment of public funds in investments lasting more than two years and not more than five years pursuant to IC 5-13-9-5.7. Whereas it is the policy of Fulton County to invest public funds in a manner which will provide the highest investment return with the maximum security while meeting the daily cash flow demands of the county and conforming to all state and local statutes governing the investments of public funds and whereas Indiana Code 5-13-9-5.7A5 authorizes the fiscal body of a political subdivision to adopt an investment policy authorizing the investment of public funds of the political subdivision for more than two years and not more than five years and whereas the Indiana Code limits the total investments lasting more than two years and not more than five years to not more than 25% of the total portfolio of public funds invested by the political subdivision, including balances in transaction accounts, and whereas the Fulton County Board of Finance on June 12, 2023, adopted a Fulton County investment policy in the form attached here to and made part hereof as Exhibit A, authorizing investments lasting more than two years and not more than five years. Now therefore, be it ordained that the County Council of Fulton County, Indiana, hereby adopts the Fulton County investment policy attached here to as Exhibit A and approves the investment of Fulton County public funds by the Fulton County Treasurer in investments lasting more than two years and not more than five years, so long as the total amount of such investments outstanding does not exceed 25% of the total portfolio of public funds invested by Fulton County, including balances in transaction accounts. 
be it further ordained that this ordinance and the authority to make investments lasting more than two years and not more than five years shall expire on June 20th, 2027, four years from this date, in accordance with IC 5-13-9-5, probably point seven A and six. Any questions or comments, board members? This is just a renewal of the current policy. You betcha. That's yes. all it is. Yes. That's all it is. So, so, so we're going to um, forego having the last reading by title only next month so we can get this done for Kathy if that meets with everyone's approval. So I will then ask for a motion to have a second and third reading by title only of this ordinance. Do you make the motion? Is there a second? Be seconded. All in favor? Signify raising your right hand. Motion carries 6-0. Second reading by title only. Only ordinance number 06202023. Adoption Fulton County Investment Policy and Ordinance Authorizing the Investment of Public Funds in Investments Lasting More Than Two Years and Not More Than Five Years Pursuant to IC 5-13-9-5.7. That was the second reading. The third and last reading. Ordinance number 06202023. Adoption Fulton County Investment Policy and Ordinance Authorizing the Investment of Public Funds in Investment Lasting More Than Two Years and Not More Than Five Years Pursuant to IC 5-13-9-5.7. Any questions or comments, board members? <coughs> if not, I will ask for a motion to ask this, uh, approve this ordinance. Motion to approve. Steve moved to approve. Is there a second? Ron seconded. All in favor, signify by raising your right hand. Carry six is a rope. Do you like move? I did. Sorry. Okay, I'm going to uh, sign and pass. So if you guys will sign and pass. Please and thank you. <laughs> I hope so. Are they laughing at me? No. no. Oh, come on. I just said her money's safe <laughs> Do what? I just told her her money's safe then. Oh, <laughs> no, sorry. That's why she's happy. Well, yeah. Well, yeah. That's why that money's out there being invested right now. Mm -hmm. Not that there's a whole lot out there. Just a quick update. Um, settlement has been done. Okay. Um, all went well. I hope. Good. Um, you know, I'm, I'm working on have that in your rearview mirror. Oh yeah, it is. It's nice to get settlement done and out of the way. So, mm -hmm. um, just getting ready to work on. I was starting preliminary. We started working on tax sale. Um, I pulled the list of potential tax sales properties that are up for tax sale. We decided to try something a little bit different this year just to see what kind of response I'd get. So I found an old courtesy letter Lori had done several years ago, revamped it, updated it, sent it out to first time properties that are potential properties that could be on that tax sale. So forego would, nothing in Aubby Township. So this would be mailed to the tax okay. The property owner? Yes. Okay. At their okay. at their property is potentially up for tax sale. Okay. If they would come in and either pay to take it off tax sale, make arrangements. Okay. Potentially foregoing any more to stop the process. Has, or any more fees being added on because once I once I certify, there's another hundred and fifty bucks that goes on and they gotta not only do they gotta pay, they gotta pay everything up to the full tax. Did not know that. So we've had a lot of positive response Good. to it. Um, we've had people that are, oh God, I didn't know I was that far behind come in. They'll either pay, they've paid everything up to, including fault taxes, or they're in a situation I can only pay, what's the bare minimum I can pay to give me a chance to get. And we've had a few of those that have paid just the tax sale to get it off. And then they're coming in and working on the rest of the back taxes. But, 
pleasantly surprised at the response, which I'm glad because that's just less good. Got to worry about a tax sale time. Yep. Good. So other than that, it's our short time. Good. So thank you. That's all I have. Unless you guys have questions or comments for Kathy. Mm -hmm. Thank you much. Thank you. Okay, what's next? Oh, um, the library board appointments. And we've got two. Uh, let's see, the first one is, nope, not that one. The first one is Renee Obermeyer. She um, is finishing her four-year term and would like to be reappointed for another four-year term, and that would be from July 1st, 2023, and end June 30th, 2027. Any comments? Is there a motion to approve? Pete moved to approve. Is there a second? Randy seconded. All in favor, say goodbye. Raise your right hand. Carries 6 0. Do I sign anything on this? I think you do. Or at just you. Okay. And the second library board appointment is. Let's see, Paul Zarkman is going to complete an unexpired term because Linda Wenzel, who's on the board currently and serving a four-year term, has moved out of the county. So uh, Mr. Zarkman would fill that term, remainder of the term, from July 1st, 2023 until June 30th, 2024. Any questions or comments about Mr. Zartman completing this library board term? If not, is there a motion to approve? Steve moved to approve. Is there a second? Pete seconded. All in favor signify by raising your right hand. Motion carries 6-0. Okay, next on our agenda, um, FEDCO board appointment. So at, at our last maybe council meeting, we, we suggested if anyone was interested in being um, the council and commissioners, I guess, um, FEDCO board appointment to contact Christina they were interested. Did anyone contact you? Not at all. Other, at one time, Randy Gunder was yeah. interested. I thought I contacted her. At yes, I you did it too. Oh, okay. <laughs> yes, you did. Yes. Sorry, outside of you, no one Outside else of you. Okay. And you're still interested in filling the board appointment? Yes. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I will tell you that um, Michael sent me an email saying that another gentleman who visited was possibly interested in being uh, our board appointment. Charlie Sparks, am yeah. I saying that correctly? Char Charlie Sparks. Okay. And he lives at the lake. Yeah. Okay. And he had expressed interest you found out about the FEDCO board appointment and he expressed interest to you and you sent me an email saying that he was interested. That's correct. Is that correct? Yeah. Okay. So let's have some let's board, let's have some discussion about our board appointment to the FEDCO board. I I don't know who uh, I don't know Mr. Sparks. Don't know him at all. Are our board members, are you interested in having the board appointment um, 
be someone that sits on the council or the com or commissioner? Do you want to um, allow more time for the people to express interest? Do you want to have Mr. Sparks come and talk to us? Let's have a discussion about the FEDCO board appointment. I kind of hate to kick the can down the road much longer, but that's just me. Okay. Well, I'll, I guess I'll jump right in on that and, and, and give you my opinion. And of course, it's my opinion. But I feel like, you know, uh, we're, we are appropriating money towards this. And I think that it would be a wise move to have someone on our council on that board. This is the way I feel. Okay. I'll sound like a broken record, but I've said that all along, that I think the county and the city should have an official on the board. And I sent you an email that said I was also interested in it. Are you, and you're still interested in being yes. sitting on the federal board? The Fedco board. Oh boy. Okay. Okay. That's just my opinion. I feel like that the, the public would have a liaison, so to speak, to ask questions and then not necessarily discuss uh, private deals and works. But I've said that all along. I think there should be an official from the county and the city on the Fedco board. I understand that. Not I remember, politics, I remember you just saying for, that. Just for the reason to, to help with the taxpayers for questions and funding issues. Okay. Understood. Don't disagree. Okay, board members. I don't. I don't like any nothing against it, but pitting one against another. Randy was the first one to speak up. About expressing about, interest about being expressing open. interest. Okay. And, I mean, both are capable, no doubt about that. And Michael, uh, gentlemen, I have to take your word for it. And I don't think you would tell me anything wrong. But he, I, I don't know the gentleman. This is your I know point. Randy and I know Pete. This is your appointment. This, you know, <clears throat> I just passed on. He's not here right now because he's he was on vacation, but he had expressed some interest in it. I'll give you a real quick uh, background. It doesn't. I'm not advocating him informing, uh, but Charlie's been uh, down in Kokomo for years and years. He's been in the whole area for 30 years doing economic development. He's partially responsible for the EV plant that's coming in down there. Um, about in the 1990s, I think it was, he actually ran, headed up the old um, Department of Commerce at the state level. So, I mean, he's state down to local and everything. Uh, he's down to one day a week at Kokomo and um, still working on the EV plant there, but lives in Rochester and has expressed interest in helping Rochester grow. So that's, you know, and he's, uh, you, that's all you really know about it. No, and that's fine. That's fine. So, so whether he were, sounds like whether he was um, a federal board appointment or not, he would really be a good advocate. Oh, yeah. Advocate um, to move the county forward and, and knowledgeable and beneficial. So, so he's a good guy to I know have, have, it, have in our corner no matter what capacity. I would agree with that. I've known Charlie for 30 years. Okay. And, um, I'll, I'll put it this way. If he wanted to run that organization over there, I'd be his assistant, no problem. <laughs> He's that good. Wow. And yeah. nothing against these gentlemen. Yes, yes, understood. Noted. Okay. So it sounds like we have to decide a couple. So first of all, um, do we want to consider Mr. Sparks or do we want to make a decision about the board appointment between Randy and Pete? I so, Randy and Pete. Okay, I, I agree with Steve. That because in December, Brian comes off. Brian Goodman. No. Well, that, yes, Brian, Brian, Brian Goodman, Goodman comes off. off. And so there's, 
you know, if the city wants to appoint this gentleman or they want to appoint one of their own. They can do that. There, they can do that. Sure. And this way this yeah, gentleman can learn more too. and they can learn more about him. Good idea. Yes, good idea. Okay. Both Pete and Randy have expressed interest. <laughs> I'm kind of of the position too that Randy expressed interest first. Um, of course, Pete's qualified. They're both qualified, but I I just think it's kind of I don't know first come first. Randy expressed interest first, so that's kind of my thinking. Other thoughts, board members. Randy's expressed his desire to learn more about Pedco too, so he said that publicly in our meetings. So okay. I, I think that's a strong plus there too. Okay. Not that Pete has it, but just right. vote on it. Don't make boys vote. Okay. <laughs> they're they're both qualified. Okay. I'll make a motion for Randy just because he stated it first. Okay. No, nothing else. Motion has been made by Ron to. Um, Point Randy as our FEDCO board appointment. Is there a second? I'll second it with a comment. We had two board members before it. When one couldn't go to a meeting, they called the other one to go <laughs> and be there. Replacement. That makes yeah. Pretty good sense. Okay. Because yeah. that that's when I mean, setting one fill in. That's a good idea. That is a good idea. Yeah. Right. Good. Okay. Um, so, so I'm would you be willing? Up. Would you be willing to be the backup? Um, Board appointment if Randy couldn't attend. Yeah. Okay. That sounds good. All right. They won't attend, they attend anyway. Right. Do what? Say again. If Pete wanted to go attend any meeting, he could go if he wants to, right? I don't think they're open yeah, to the public. They're, they're, not not open. they're not open to the public. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, you they're not open to the public. But there's a lot of traveling and other meetings outside of immediate meetings. That's why it's getting in. And, and um, so I have to just re just say for the record, just to reiterate, there's a lot of confidential information that is shared at the FEDCO board meetings that you can tell no one, not even Ron. You can't tell anybody anything. Okay. That sounds like home. Uh, but you do, you're welcome. All right. So a motion's been made by Ron, seconded by Lori um, to... Um, make Randy our FEDCO board appointment with Pete as backup. If Randy can't attend the board meetings, all in favor signify by raising your right hand. Motion carries four, 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 for it. And you guys aren't voting. Sorry. And, and they both, both Randy and Pete have stayed. Hey. These guys are funny. All right, what's next? Uh, minutes. The minutes. I have one question. Okay. When we get down to the minutes on. There's two separate sets of minutes. Yeah, May 22nd. So I don't know if you want to attach the first one first and go to May 22nd. I do. I just have a question, and I may be. Right, so our so I'm going to talk about the May our our May 16th County Council meeting minutes first. Okay. Is that the one you have a question about? No. Okay. So has everyone read um, the minutes from our May 16th County Council meeting? Yes. And is there any questions or, or corrections to the minutes? If not, is there a motion to approve the May 16th County Council meeting? Lori moved to approve. Is there a second? Steve seconded. All in favor signify by raising your right hand. Motion carries 6-0. The next set of min minutes um, are the May 22nd meeting minutes, and this is when we met for uh, to uh, review and approve appropriations. And only Ron, myself, um, Steve, and Randy attended that meeting, so they're the only four that can vote. And that's the question I have, because on the form I have, it says Randy Gunner absent. Oh, that needs and, to be corrected. And, and the the yes, on the bottom of that form. Okay. I'll, I'll cross it out. Okay. 
Thank you. Thank you for noticing that. And to that, I'm going to sign the May 17th minutes and pass. <coughs> the May 17th minutes and pass. And the May 22nd, Randy Gundrum. I have to. So I cross out his name and I'm writing absent under Chase because Chase wasn't here. That's correct. Okay, so I'm I'm there. All right. So Ron, Steve, or Randy. No, where you at now? So so and myself. We're the Phil, only. me. Yes, we're the only four that can vote on the the May twenty second meeting yeah. minutes. You and I and Randy and Pete. and Steve. You and I, Steve. So, Steve, 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 move to approve. Steve is also listed as absent. It is. Oh, okay, I'll cross that it out. Doesn't correct at the top though. In the who is present? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yes. Okay. So, Steve, move to yeah. approve. And Ron seconded. All in favor, signify by raising right hand. Carries four zero. With the correction, that's correct. And I'm going to sign and pass for signatures if you attended this meeting. Next, transfers. We have one transfer. Um, this is for, uh, from Mike Mars, prosecuting attorney. He's transferring from software $572.19 to office supply. Um, the, the explanation, the office supply line does not have enough money to cover the quill claim. Are there any questions or comments regarding this transfer? If not, is there a motion to approve the transfer request? Ron moved to approve. Is there a second? I'll Lori seconded. All in favor signify by raising your right hand. Motion carries 6 0. Next. Okay. Pete, you can't vote on some of these. Next. General County General uh, the first is um, for the EMA office <coughs> Deputy Director twelve thousand eight hundred <coughs> Um, $1,440 for a total of $14,290. Craig has been working 23 to 20, the explanation, excuse me. Craig has been working 23 to 28 hours a week before taking the directors. We didn't know the true demand of both positions. The EMPG grant pays up to 50% of the director's salary. Okay. And the next from County General by the network administrator shifting maintenance wages to the maintenance budget. $11,885. Is there any questions or comments about the um, appropriation request out of County General? If not, I know, I am too. Yeah. So explain this all to us, Christine. Christina? I had to do with the removal of the $10,000 when they removed it from Josh's job description and put it in the maintenance director who's now Carrie Peter. So I reduced the $10,000 out of Josh's budget 
and then appropriated it into the maintenance director's budget. Okay. And then there was still additional needed for all the other line items. Oh, for the, okay, so oh, from the courthouse. Yes, that's where Carrie's being paid from, not the okay. budget. Okay, okay, gotcha. So, so the eleven. I can't transfer from one location to another just within. That's within correct. Our, yeah, so okay. I'd reduce okay. it out of Josh. Thank you. That was my question. Okay. <laughs> okay, so this was just, just red tape, but you can and can't do. Yes. Yes. Gotcha. Thanks, Lori. Okay. Any other questions or comments? Motion approved. Lori moved to approve. Is there a second? Randy seconded. All in favor? Signify by raising your right hand. He's going to abstain, or Jeff. Well, from the PMA one, yes. Okay. Motion carries five and a half. <laughs> <laughs> I guess. <laughs> five and a part, Five and a partial. I'm going to pass the sign. And the next one. This is. This is. Writing and hurrying. Okay. The officer, plat book, $4,000 to scan, transfer, and plat books and add to the public portal. Any discussion? If not, is there a motion to approve? So Randy moved to approve. Is there a second? Lori seconded. All in favor signify by raising your right hand. Motion carries 6 0. And the next one, this is, I think, all Gail. Yes, this is Gail. Um, these are the two invoices Gail was telling us about for equipment. Uh, $43,367.12, two invoices remaining for jail construction on the tower. <coughs> this was not adjusted on the previous for jail construction fund. This will be appropriated out of communication. 12.2 fund, um, FCC, FCC licensing, moving and upgrading and miscellaneous equipment. Ron moved to approve. Is there a second? Who said it? Steve seconded. All in favor? Signify by raising your right hand. Motion carries 5 0. Pete abstained. I'm passing for signatures. And the next one Health Department COVID testing um, for supplies, vaccines, maintenance equipment. For a total of $4,315 um, to appropriate the money for the 2023 to help operate the immunization clinic. Is there any discussion? That's still going. Did you hear that? You have to COVID testing and vaccines. Is it still going? I, have, I don't have a clue. I don't have I don't have a clue. Uh -huh. So any other questions that I can't answer? Is there a motion to approve? Sorry. Is there a motion to approve? That's not moved. Randy moved to approve. Steve seconded. All in favor signify by raising your right hand. Motion carries. Are you are you are you not voting? I'm voting. I'm voting. I'm not voting. Okay, Randy, did, Randy, you voted for it, yes? Yes. Yeah. So motion carries five, four, um, and Pete was against. Pete voted no. Okay, the last additional appropriation. This is the highway department. $70,200 for the power room. Any questions or comments? <coughs> if not, is there a, 
Steve moved to approve. Pete seconded. All in favor, signify by raising your right hand. Motion carries 6-0. Okay. That's the last of the additional appropriations. We're down to old business. Pete, old business. No. Randy, old business. No. Lori? No. Old business. Did you say no or no? Or, okay. Steve, old. No. Ron? No. I have no old business. Christina? No. Anyone in the audience? Well, there's no. There's nobody there. <laughs> okay. No old business out there. New business. Pete? No. Randy? No. Lori? No. Somebody better talk because I've got lots. Steve, new. Right? I have one question, and I should have asked it last night, and I didn't. Okay. Because um, as I was leaving here, an observer asked a question, actually made a comment, and uh, I should have asked the $15 million that they approved, was that just a pass-through to go to the state from... You're talking about settlement? Yeah. What was that? That's, that, that, that's distribution of taxes. That's, that's the distribution, distribution of all the taxes time. that were collected to each township or yeah. okay. corresponding. I, mean, I should have asked the question last night, and I did. Because yeah. it does sound like an awful lot of money, but it's basically that year. I mean, it goes to the state, or is that what we No, do? that goes to each individual. Part of it goes to the state, but it also goes to each township, city, town, Every entity in, in That's the our county. distribution to everybody in the county. Is that including our the county? Yes. Is mm -hmm. the county funds as well? Mm -hmm. Okay. And then there were two of them, and I think I know what they were, but again, just for general knowledge, the two lit funds, both of them were over a million dollars. Yeah, one, is for one the was a lit supplemental. No, no, no. The, the income tax all goes out together. Oh, okay. But one was a supplemental, which we get. Usually we only get it once every couple of years. This one was actually a really big one. We're not used to getting it. Yeah, I was surprised so the state too. Is sitting on extra money that they pass through to the county, and the other one is just the normal local income tax that we would have raised based on income tax collected in the county. Okay. All right. Well, afterward, I got home thinking about that. And I went, well, I should have been more upfront to the individual because it does sound like a boatload of money, but it's and, and normal what, business. Yeah, and one you said that the state, the state sits on? The lit supplemental, once they collect a certain threshold, they'll pass it back to the counties. So for us to have gotten that much money, they're passing a lot back to the county. Mm -hmm. And how much was it? I guess I didn't hear about 1.6 million? Yeah. I was gonna say, it, it was, was Yeah, it was, it was huge. It was like, It was whoa. more than our monthly distribution. Yeah, it was way more than monthly. So it was totally unexpected. Mm -hmm. Oh, mm -hmm. thank heavens. Thank heavens. What am I doing? Yeah, because when they first come in, I'm like, holy cow, where did wow. this come from? Hmm. Okay. That's all. I have. That's all you have. Okay. Um. So I have. A, so first, I have a couple. I have a couple. I have a couple things. First, I want to tell you what the. So, so the county's portion of the host fee distribution for February March was fifty four thousand three hundred and thirty three dollars and sixty seven cents. And second, uh, secondly, because there's three. Secondly, who, huge kudos to our Mr. Steve mm -hmm. for all of his hard work for um, the flags and putting on the cemeteries for the veterans. All the hard work that he's done. Kudos to you, Steve. Yes. It's most appreciated. Thank you spearheaded that, and you and it, you're appreciated. Thank you, and I thank the council, the commissioner, and like I say, the city council and mayor for everything they did too. Contributing, but you, know, you did the like work. <laughs> the hard part, the hard part. So, so you're good. Good. Just, we'll do some paper. <laughs> yes. Okay. And lastly, of me, we have to schedule two dates in July for budget presentations. And Steve made a good point last night, and I, I think it's a fabulous point. Steve. Do you have a suggestion of a date? Do you want to do it on the day of our Tuesday meeting next month and just start at 9 and try to get as much done as we can before the council meeting? So that would be July 18th. 
And and then I was asking Christina, shame on me, without your permission, Steve, if she was available on the 18th. She said that she is. And she then recommended, do you guys want to start at earlier than nine? Maybe we can get it done today. Do you want to start at eight or eight thirty? Maybe we can get it all done today. Thoughts? We start at seven if you want. I don't care. It doesn't matter to me either. I'd better do it. I'd better do it one day than two partials. Me too. Personally. Yeah. Well, and it's not a given. I'm so sure. trying to squeeze yeah. everybody in. You know. Okay, I'm happy. So, so July 18th. Is that okay with you? That's fine. Right. So, so everybody's schedule is okay for July 18th. Um, do you want to go 8 or 8.30? Uh, let's start at 8.15. 8.15, our first, our first hearing. 8.15, 8.15, July 18th, budget presentations. And Christine will, Christina will have pick budget books here for us so we can write notes and ourselves because department heads will give their presentation to us and answer any questions about their budget and then you can write on on your paperwork and if July 19th is needed I'll put what, whatever needs to over on July 19th on that day okay July 18th and 19th but it won't be more than the morning no. at the very worst okay so that's all the new business I had. Did you have any new business, Christina? No. Anything anything else out there? New business to anybody? Okay. If if there's nothing else, is there a motion to adjourn? <laughs> Ron moved moved to adjourn. Who seconded? Steve. Lori. Laurie threw up both hands. All in favor, signify the way you right now.